Hello guys, I just wanted to create a video documentation of um, a few things. How USRPs work, how signal, certain signal processing works, how GMSK works, and moreover how I created a VLC visual, visible light communication circuit using a USRP. So first we started with a USRP N210. It looks exactly like this. I realize this is a picture on a screen. Maybe it will be easier if you can see the actual box right here. This is the USRP N210. It um, has it can support a variety of voltages. These right here are SMA connectors. I believe they are known as the male connectors, but some people call them the female connectors. The terminology on that is a little bit confusing. They have an Ethernet port as well, and they have a 6 volt, 3 amp voltage supply right here that you can plug in. There's also a MIMO expansion. I haven't worked with that, but it's pretty interesting. So the first steps um, can be found on the Edis website, the company that created this basically. It's called the N200 N210 Getting Started Guide, and it basically shows you first how to assemble the circuit um, and how to set it up, the terminal commands that you'll need in order to download GNU Radio, and pretty much everything you need, um, all the software, everything else. It takes a little bit of time, but there are these guides online to help you out. Then once you go through the entire guide, you have to actually install images, FPGA images onto your USRP. It's kind of like the software that allows you to use GNU Radio with the USRP. So you go to where your Python file is, the USRP card 2 card burner. Um, actually, it wasn't that one. It was the other one. It was the images downloader. Yeah, you go, you type in images downloader, find where the, find where the images downloader is on your computer. And then usually either this command right here will work for you, the burn MBE prom. Or in my case, it was the um, NetBurner USRP 2XX series. I'll show you what I mean on my computer if I can find it. Um, I believe it was net underscore burn, maybe? Here it is, yep. This is the command that actually ended up working for me. Before that, I got an error that said FPGA images um, version is not correct, a bunch of stuff like that. Basically, first you have to run this Python file and then you have to run the executable file that it creates. This is a Python script, basically, that will create an executable file for you to use. Um, it should be noted that this, all of this, these software, all of this software, it's awful to download on Windows. Like, just don't, I, I would honestly tell you, just don't, don't try to do it on Windows. Because I did, I tried for like three weeks, like literally four to six hours a day, and it just was awful, absolutely awful. Every possible error went wrong. It's really designed for Linux, um, but this is a Mac, and it works pretty well on Mac too, so that's all right. Once everything's downloaded, you should be able to type the um, command uh, UHD underscore find devices. Let's see if it will tell me. So if your USRP is not connected, you get an error like empty device address, obviously, you see that there's nothing connected to my computer. So I'm going to get that device um, address error if I try to run it. But when it runs successfully, you get something that looks like this. You say um, UHD underscore USRP probe, like that. And then you'll see a little message that pops up that tells you the IP address, the gateway address, all kinds of other stuff. Some of it is helpful, most of it is um, just kind of there for your convenience. And then you can also type UHD underscore find underscore devices, like this. And that will show you which devices are connected, the address, the serial number, everything like that. Um, and then if you want to run GNU Radio Companion, assuming it's installed correctly, you should just be able to type GNU Radio underscore companion or something like that. Maybe it's GNU underscore radio companion. Let's see here. Uh, I think there was an extra underscore. 
Oh, it was a dash, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a dash. Yep, that was it. GNU radio dash companion. Yeah, there we go. Then you get this uh, bunch of warnings that really don't mean anything important. GNU radio pops up, and then from I was trying to make a visible light communication circuit. So this is my block diagram. I have a file source. I have a packet encoder. GMSK modulation, which I'm going to explain on the whiteboard in a little bit. A multiply constant. This is optional, honestly. You don't really need it, but I like having it because I can change the voltage levels and stuff. And then a UHD USRP sync. That is my block diagram for sending the signal. Um, however, receiving the signal is a different program because I'm trying to run it on a different USRP to actually send data through light. So on this receiving end, I have a USRP source. Again, a multiply constant that I don't really need. A low pass filter to help um, reduce noise. And then the, a graph. And then GMSK demodulation, packet decoder, and a file sync. This works. These programs work together to send data from a, one USRP to the other. This has worked successfully with a cable connecting the two. Um, however, I'm still trying to get it to work with visible light. I got the signal to send, and I got the oscilloscope to graph the received signal correctly, which I'm super excited about, but I'm having photo detector issues. So I'm still working on that part of it. Now I'm going to show you the circuit over here. So this is the USRP. Um, these ports, like I said, are called SMA cables, and it's actually pretty hard to find SMA cables that do what you need. I kind of did a roundabout solution. I don't necessarily recommend it. However, it worked for me. See, I just kind of shoved a wire into that. Um, well, that's the receiving end, but the sending end right here, I just shoved the wire in there. And that actually gets the signal. And the signal that I received from this machine was like 47 to 60 volts, which is kind of high. I thought this was going to be a lot lower voltage, but yeah. So when you're dealing with these, be careful. I already shocked myself pretty bad. Uh, it was scary. <laughs> but I'm alive, so it's all good. So then I have this connected to my nice little breadboard right here. Basically, um, apparently, with these transistors, I didn't know this, the base, or rather the gate, is on the left, the drain's in the middle, and the source is on the right. For those of you college students or people who have not done a whole lot of electronics work or haven't used transistors extensively, this can be very confusing because I fried four transistors trying to figure that out. Now that I know that, it works great. Um, so, right here, I have the AC signal coming from the USRP connected to the gate of the transistor through a resistor because if you don't have a resistor, it will fry your, your transistor basically. And then from the drain, I have the drain in the middle going going through another resistor that then turns on the light, the LED, this light, and the flashlight over here, back there. I have them connected in series so that if anything goes wrong, if I get a huge voltage spike, it's just going to break this 10 cent LED instead of breaking that whole flashlight back there, which was $10. Still pretty 